we just go over the code for the backend code. Uh, we're just going to discuss if we have any doubts or anything. So this application, let's look into first uh, the requirement.txt. Here it has the uh, different IDs, right? We are using base Django version 2.2.13, then all auth, course header, rest auth, and Django rest framework. Okay. And along with that, there are other uh, APIs that are there. So we just go over the project structure, and uh, I think the a team members are already gone through Django training. So they can ask me what are the you know question they has, or they can also discuss that. So under API is the all the source codes are there, okay. And uh, under this API, what you can see is that these are the source codes is there. So normally we know that uh, first we start with the uh, init.py. So there is nothing at search. In the init.py that you can find but let us go step by step with this uh, let us first go into our model of the application so in this application we have two model uh, one is assignments and another is the graded assignment so this is just a small application and also along with that That we have here is we have few other models which are choice, which are questions, and that's more or less the model structure look like. Okay, so here also from the users we have included our from the user model we have included our users. Okay. So from the user model, what we have is that we have like a simple user, which is again uh, inheriting the Django country auth model abstract user. Here is uh, there are like two additional properties of field we can see. One is the user model Boolean field, and another is the is student. So those are the normal Boolean field that are there. And uh, we have only sub, uh, one particular and an addition model that is, is a student model. And here the student model have a, like a one to one relationship. So there's we we have like a users that are there. So then we have the model one to one field user on deletion that it will also cascade that. So on the user deletion, your student object will also be cascaded. Apart from that, it has uh, like a uh, string method which has a returning the self dot username. That's the additional, just the username from the abstract user that we can see. And here also it's returning the string dot username that are there. Okay. And apart from the model, what you can see, right? There's nothing but the initialization, but let us look into the obviously the serializer that we have. Okay, so in the serialization, as you know, that we use uh, the model serializer and we have the meta class. The meta class, the model is obviously the users. The field that we are exposing out of the that is the email, username, first name, is student, and is teacher. That is your user serializer. And obviously, for customization serializer, there are these like additional fields that have been added student and teacher it is a kind of meta is from this laser is also based on uh, registration serializer and they're like addition serializer which is also token serializer okay so this registration serializer is coming from your simple restaurant registration serializer here we are uh, exposing the same name uh, fields that are from the user serializer that you can see and if also they're like cleaning up the data so for example they want 
this is like a just clean up method so in the clean up method that all the fields values are basically blanked out that we have and also they are you know uh, doing the validation of that and for save what they're doing is uh, basically they are getting new user out of here from the request okay and then they are uh, setting up the self clean and then they are checking whether that there is like a user do present in the clean data that is coming from your request and then they are basically putting these values and then simply just on the model they are calling the save method and also addition serializer that we have is the token serializer okay And the token serializer is based on the token, and this token is again coming from the auth framework token. And there you have the particular get user type. Uh, we are using user serializer based on a user object. And then if the we are getting the serialized data value is present, then we are returning that, and then we are returning either it is true or false so in terms of the user serialization. And in the view, there only we have one view that is coming your normal view sets and model view sets. And this just simply uh, querying the all the users that are from the model that is currently there. OK. And uh, normal, I need there is nothing. Admin, obviously, here you have. The basic thing is uh, user admin. You have a base user admin that is extending, and then the permission are also been given. So which fields are modified by which users, whether it is super users or staff, whether what are the different operations that have been permitted out there. And then it's basically uh, admin side you are registering admin, user admin, and group that are normal there and under app you have just simply have the configuration with the namespace user model we have been seen user and student serializer we have seen the token and obviously the customer registration token with the additional data is student and his teacher and then we have the test and then we have the normal router configuration right router configuration is going to the user view and based name is the users and then you're getting the routers url that's all any questions so far that you have amrita Abdullah? Uh, nothing so far okay so this is we have already know right uh, sir, a little bit about that default router. What's the function of the default router? Okay. So default router, uh, Amrita, do you want to answer that? Is basically is the route default router is the normal router that we are creating and we are registering with the namespace and the view sets. Like for so if I say user slash, where is going to go to? Okay. okay. Yeah. Any other any other question you have? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Sir, can you show us the uh, serializers once more? I had one question. Sure. Um, in the custom, uh, in the what is the register serializer? Yeah, register serializer is basically an inbuilt serializer that is coming from the race framework auth token, uh, I think, from registration module okay. that they have. Okay, so let's see if we can you know, navigate inside that. Okay. okay so here you have that uh, by default if you wanted to use any kind of registration these are the by default fields you're going to get out of the box okay. you get the user name you get the email you have the password one and password two but the user type the password twice okay, okay. and okay. also you have the different validation methods that are there okay okay 
Now, apart from that, in our registration form, if you have like a, some additional value, so in our registration form, what we have is, if you can, you know, I can just quickly close this. And if I can go back to my APIs, serializer. So in my API serializer, what I did is, I let the user to choose their role, either what is it is student or from a teacher in a drop-down view. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, I'm just extending from a registration serializer. So by default, I'm getting the email, username, password one, password two, those details. Okay. And here I'm just adding whether it is teacher or whether it is student. Hmm. Okay. And then based on that, I'm also defining like a safe method under this serializer. And then also like Okay, this adapter is again coming from the all auth method, right? It is one of the method that is there. So all of method is also getting having that particular adapter. So just importing attributes from the adapter request. So basically adapting the request into the corresponding value. Okay. So it's basically for passing your request. So from the passing request, you're first getting the adapter. From adapter, you are actually now you're getting the new user from the request. OK. And from the request, you are converted into the user object. Okay. Because obviously, we need to other way how you can get the data details. Yeah. yeah. Also, in the get cleaned uh, method, uh, uh, so we are uh, fetching the username right. and then what is the what is the blank for the, if the value is not present then it is uh, by default returning blank. okay okay got it so if maybe there are some fields uh, which are need to be there right but if there is not been passed to then it is blank so okay. at the same time the student cannot be teacher or student cannot be student right it mm -hmm. needs one of the roles so that's yeah. what I'm okay. 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 And then, so from the, you are creating a request adapter object. After the request adapter object, you are getting the new user, right? And again, this new user thing is coming from an adapter object. And then you are getting the user object from user object. You are cleaning the first, cleaning the data. So you get a like a clean state that you get from here. And then, uh, you are getting the data and also you are getting that particular value from the request. And then you are also getting the whether this user will be in teacher or student, okay. right? Okay. And then you are saving that particular user and you are saving the user in the adapter and then you're returning the user back. Okay. Yes. Similarly, uh, the token serializer is, is just a, like a model serializer, right? And here the user type is the type that we have taken uh here we have created the model as a token again the token is again coming from the auth module now from there we are having that either key user and the user type those three values and then the whether is what kind of user it is teachers mm -hmm. that are we are getting here okay okay fine so we have seen this uh anything else is just a view that we have seen that we have just we have choose the serializer class as this, and this is our view to getting the all the users. And uh, obviously, our URL is where we defining our router, default router. We just say that, OK, this router will represent this view sets, and it's going to add this to the particular users. And those whatever URL you are exporting out. That's all. Nothing more. And OK. So from the admin side, you have like a, again, the base user admin you are getting. From the user admin, you have different add fill set. So when you're going to be adding a new user, right? So you are expecting from the your add fill sets is that that the user need to pass all those fields values, right? That mean he need to register user using them. Username is student is teacher password on password field. 
in your normal field sets what you have this email username is student is teacher and the password that you are returning for your lead this list display you are not displaying the password you are just normally displaying this and your search field you just only searching by email or username and by default your ordering is based on email so your admin site you are just registering all of that student so your custom object uh, custom model that you create a student user that is there user id and group that is there that you have registered okay That means done. Hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, what does the added field set done, done uh, in the code? Uh, admin.ui. Mm -hmm. uh, added one. field set. Can you explain again? Yeah. Added field is that when you're adding a new user, right? Yeah. Okay. There you are defining that. And this is we are extending from the base yeah. user yeah. admin, right? So they're already, they have given the added fields, right? Yeah. Correct. And here yeah. we just override the definition of that added field into our child classes. Okay. 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 So for our case, we in the base user admin model, what are the added fields are there? They have a uh, normal field set. They have like a username or password, right? Yeah. And they have it like a different uh, personal information, like a first name, last name, etc. So you are not using first name, last name, etc. Other values, right? Yeah. Okay. And permissions, we are controlling the permission as per our need. Okay. Okay. So we can control whatever uh, that we need to. And that is uh, going inside your admin model. Now here uh, we have like uh, two models that we are adding out here. There are actually four models are there. So first model is that... Um, assignments second one is the graded assignment okay third one is a choice fourth one is your questions okay so in a questions what are the fields you have you have a question field which is a care length of 200 okay and then you have like a choices now how many choices a question has is it like a uh, many to many choices it may have, right? And in the choices, what we put is we only put that uh, title that is there, that is with the max uh, like 50, right? So when you say the model many to many, so that means uh, one question can be built belong to the multiple uh, many to many choices that are there, and that the choices object we are linked to now the answers so from the choices user can choose any of the answers right so now here okay now here what is saying that um fine so it going to be answered maybe the one of the choices that will the user will choose right so in a question i can have a multiple choice question correct uh, not multiple choice, a single choice question. Okay. So in that question, I have like a given a ready button and then in the UI, the user will choose any one of the question that is one question. So which question user have chosen? So, or which is the maybe the correct answer out of the choices that we can also put, right? So here I put one of the choice objects. So it's model dot foreign key. On delete is again, it will be cascading effect. And related name will be the answer. So related field name will be the answer. Blank may be true, null may be true in that case. Next, another thing is these questions will be belong to assignment. Okay. So when these questions are belonging to assignment, so this is the model it will relate to. And it will be uh, relatable question field will be uh, relatable field will be questions and the same thing is there and the two string we are just returning question that is there okay next the choice will be straight forward it just has choices and in the assessment you have a, like a title what is the assessment title and the teacher 
who this particular assessment is it can be the one of the user that is there next we are getting the graded assignment okay so in this graded assignment we getting a student okay and this student is graded assignment mean this assignment is graded by the particular teacher okay so which student has performed this particular assignment so again it is of type student okay of type user rather then the assignment is belonging to your foreign key that is their assignment so on delete what going to happen you're going to setting the value as a null and the grade is going to be as the float field depending on how much user is getting through so it is not just one two three four it may be value that is version that is like a float value that is there okay so that been our model that are there and the relationship between those model that you can find okay any questions on the model structure no sir okay next we are going into serializer so according to our model we're going to write our specific serializer okay so here we have first we have like a string serializer this is basically string related field serializer that we are taking uh we have included from the model all the four model that we have as along with the user model okay and then you just simply uh, two internal value just converting into a value nothing much other question serializer uh, okay so here the choices will be a stream serializer there may be many value that are can come into and here the fields will be normally you have id choices questions and order that you have under questions so that's how it's going to be saved into the db and then your assignment serializer you have like questions serializer serializer method field question that is like a normal field that then you have like a string serializer that is your teacher and here you are saving all the fields that are there in the model that is there you are not choosing anything now from this model if you wanted to get the question out right from assignment if you want to get what are the questions are there so get questions so multiple question can be there right so here you are using the question serializer you are getting the all the questions that are there currently you are getting out and you're just returning all the questions that are there so from this what is the current object whatever your assignment that is there from that object or assignment object what are the question belongs to those questions you are returning now obviously you have like a create method simply obviously the first thing you need to create the assignment object and your request data you're putting into the data good enough then from the data you are getting the teacher okay that going to be your user object username you're based on that particular data who is the teacher so basically when you're querying you're querying based on the teacher that you're going to get that is a string that is the teacher username so if that condition is true then if there is any particular teacher with matching with that username then you get in the teacher object then you are assigning that particular teacher into the assignment object and the title is the straightforward data you are just like this you save the assignment so i have saved the assignment fine now i also need to saving the questions right so the question here will be come as an array so i'm going to get the individual questions okay and uh, here i have chosen a particular order which order the questions have been added into and then i'm saving that particular questions inside that any question object i'm just only setting the one saving the question with the title now next thing is coming up the choices so from the question object inside that there will be like a sub array which will be the choices and from the choices we get a new choice we put the new choice title here to directly the choice name right whatever this just a string we're saving the choices and in the question object choice list we are adding the choices that are there okay 
now similarly our choices object we are getting the corresponding answer so what is the answer that is there that we are also querying from that q answer so out of the all the choices that we have already saved which one is marked as answer that particular choice object we fetch and then we assign that to your new question object assignment we just get the assignment whatever assignment object we have created here we associate with that then we have saved the question and then we increment the order and then we return the full assignment object so when the assignment is safe it is assignment then question then choices among those choices one and four will be your answer to object and then from the answer object you just put it into a question and then you save the your corresponding values that are there now for graded assessment is basically when the after the student answer this assessment we are finding out okay so again here we get the student name as one of the fields then all the fields are there now when you're going to creating the data from the request data we're going to get first of all the assessment id and the student so after student do submission these things get saved okay so you get a particular assessment by the assessment so this assessment student should be previously existing so we just querying it from our model and we're getting those object then we created new graded assignment put this to object inside that so it, it will enable us to link to the assignment and the student then from the all the questions that student has answered within that assignment the assessment the assignment has all the question so from the all the question that you are getting we are storing into the array similarly okay we got the array now from the data we got the answer and from the answers data answers that we have we getting all the objects one by one and then from the answer we are going to be storing the exact answer that student has given okay now what do you need to calculate right so student maybe have in a particular assessment there may be like i say 10 questions are there now we need to figure out if we look into the graded assessment object model there is this field called grade so this grade is decided based on the number of questions that student has been attempted okay so number of questions that student has been attempted that is totally depends how many percentage of questions that the student got so if a 10 out of 10 is got five so that's why this data type is basically floating field okay okay now out here we are now counting the what are the questions that user will give the question count so here we have the all the questions and here we have the all the answer that student has given within that particular question so here the relationship they have put is the for each question index there is a corresponding answer index we're going to get so there are like 10 questions that the user has submitted so there will be a corresponding answer will be within the same index so zero location or whatever say one location will be one location of the question has an answer in the one location of the answer that is there in the answer array so from there what we are getting we are getting the we started with zero so we're going into that particular range right uh, so here the question we when i have the question we also have the answer so we are matching the title of that particular answer to this answer array okay and if this is like a same so we are incrementing the answer count as one we incrementing the index by one okay now the grade need to be calculated so how the grade will calculate it so we get to say out of say 10 questions there are like five questions that the user got right the length of is like 10 
so 5 by 10 into 100 so that is the floating point grade value we got it so from the graded assessment we put the grade is equal to say 50 percent and we save it and we return the graded assessment okay these are the two CLSs that we are seeing any question on this CLSs so far I just have a question from uh, the design sort of perspective. Okay. So in the in the thing that I in the in the Udemy courses and everything else, I was seeing that most of these um, methods were put in the view view okay. file. Okay. So is that mostly just a choice? I thought that it was more of like that is how you have to do it. But uh, is that just a choice by the programmer? So you are actually asking that where we put these particular methods are, right? Yeah, like here it's in the serializer file, mm -hmm. but uh, in 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 the one that I also made, I put all of the get methods and the put methods in the view file. Hmm. So um, I was I I use I thought initially that uh, all the methods have to be placed in the view file. Mm -hmm. So is that's just a design choice, right? By the programmer who is designing the API. Yeah. So basically what I prefer to, I like to prefer to view should be mostly dry. Right. Okay. okay. So generally don't put your business logic into a view rather than create a separate uh, service component or separate methods in separate class. Right. Okay. And then also you can here we put the business logic, right? Mm -hmm. You can also extract the business logic into your separate classes altogether. Okay. 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 Here okay. only you can have like a basic methods, like you define like it's a model CLS, like what are the things I want to CLS in and out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a request object. That's the purpose of the CLS. Okay. The other should not be containing this kind of a logic. Uh, where you're going to be having like uh, all of this great calculation logic. Right. Okay, it should not be there. Okay, so that should be in a separate class and keep. Okay. Oh, we put we see lots of courses and lots of places that people are putting in the view all of the things. I will mm -hmm. put that in a separate uh, class altogether. Okay, mm -hmm. and call the class method inside your view. Okay, perform okay. my business operation there. Keep your uh, CLizer also dry. Right? Okay. Only if, uh, maybe the whatever minimum thing you need to do in terms of request uh, parsing, etc. You can put it there. Rest of the business logic put in a different class. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. So that being done, so let's see what else we can have. So now we have our views, right? Okay. So now we have taken two views, uh, basic view that we already know. So we can get it from generic list API view and create API view. So let's see individual methods that are there or even model views and that is there. So first we are creating the graded assignment view. Okay. So gated assignment view, what you can see, uh, we have like a create view. So it's kind of a going to be mapped against your post method, right? So here uh, our CLS class will be your gated assessment CLS. Now here the query set is also gated assessment object all. It's all the objects they are fetching. Okay. So from this class now we have created the uh, post, right? So here we have receiving the request and from the request data we created the CLizer and then we are checking the normal that the CLizer is valid then we created from the request the graded assignment right after your graded assignment is done that means your graded assignment is saved then you are returning your response type whether it is 201 created and your 400 win if it is somehow invalid right so this is normally how we write now the question is 
that should I put all the different logic out here in the serializer or not? I say print a different class, a different class method. Okay. Only deserialize the object, calculate your read logic inside that, and then you save it and then you return the value out. Okay. So that means your create view that has been created. Okay. Next is your list view. So if you wanted to see what are the gated assignment list view that are there. So again, you have the sale as a class. You're calling the get query set method. Okay, that is self. Now here we are getting all the values. After what are the values from the request? We are getting the query parameters and query parameter, whatever the username. If we don't find the username, we pass the default value that is none. So if the username is not num, if the username is passed, then from the fetch all kind of a query list, we now add the filter. So we put student username and then we pass place the username. So based on that, that being executed and the query set is returned, right? And because it our model, we had the student, right? Student is of type user. That's why here we are using student colon colon user, uh, sorry, underscore underscore username is equal to user because the student is of user type. And then when the username is match, that based on that particular query site, we are returning the result. So here we are getting the result for the users that is requesting. Okay, then you have the your normal assembly view set. But before going into that, uh, this portion I hope is clear. Let's just go into the UR or this PTY. So URL PTY, here we are uh, again mapping the URL path, right? That we normally do. So here by default uh, base path, what you are doing is you have created your views from the API view. One is the list view, right? So list view is directly mapped okay and then after this default structure what you have is if you put slash create then the create view is mapped to that so these two views are generally mapped out okay now here you have like an assignment you have by default serializer class, we have get all kind of a method. And now uh, you have like a create. So from the create, you are passing the request data and you are getting from the assembly serializer, you're getting serializer, you're checking all the data are valid or not. Now serializer, then we call the create method, then the assignment got created. If the assignment got created, we are returning the response so here the response statuses we have got from the race framework status these two statuses we are returning the status now the same thing is now mapped out here here you also use the default router and from default router we say that if this is the base name is assignments and based on the assignments uh, all the maps are view sets are assignment view sets are mapped Okay, so that is your create method. That is how it is mapped. And apart from that, uh, we have apps. We don't have nothing much, just the uh, inner space that we have given. And model we have seen. And here we have registered all the models that are there under admin sites. And in it, there is nothing. Okay, so that's your more or less the backend code looks like. I think it is pretty straightforward, right, guys? Now we should be able to create any kind of 
this kind of a model so here we are using the best practices we just uh, you know waking them up in a separate modules and whichever models we wanted to use anywhere we are using that and apart from that we don't have anything and the, your main code is where you're restarting your django application right that is straightforward Okay, uh, that been done. Okay, there's nothing more. Uh, we can look into the front end code then. Yeah. Okay, fine. So front end code is uh, built on React. Okay, so in the front end code, what you need, we uh, have to use the package that JSON, right? We, here we put in a same kind of a repository, but we can you know separate out in a different repository altogether. So here we have uh, use uh, Axios. Axios being the API that we generally use to make the API call from the React. Then we have the normal React uh, framework, then React DOM manipulation, React Redux, that is the front-end sites state management then the router dom and then the react script redux we have here and the redux tongues that we have added along with the ntdd that is our template that library we have used okay and we use uh, normally uh, then we have written some of the script on uh, that in the npm side but you have created the start react skip start build react skip build okay test you have react skip then test environment JSTOM. then you have post install npm run build okay and eject etc so basically we can run if you are to run we just put npm then we put start so that will execute the react script and that will initiate our front-end code so our front-end code is initiated from the index.js so from index.js we need to bootstrap our application in case of a react what happened is that our application template etc are basically stored out here so let's see so first we have uh, imported react react dom and also we have imported our main app file Okay, and this app file is what that is uh, initialize your uh, your root component. Okay, so here uh, inside React we are extending from the React model, importing React and the component. Uh, so here we have created our application app extend component. Okay, and our root render going to be inside here okay then after that what we are extending next is the dom from dom we are using browser router as router so like in the back end router we have like a front end router and then uh, we going to be having those routes stores etc being used for redux uh, react redux we are getting connect okay and then we from the NTD, we are that particular template model we are using their CSS. Okay, now let's look into uh, how the application is bootstrap. So, within the application, you have your main router, and within the router, you have like a custom layout. You are using base router that you have extended. Custom layout is coming from here. In a separate place so that tag you put you put base router and then you put the properties that is there okay now you have two methods for uh, storing the initial stage of the one is like a map state to pop you are just 
using the connect and connect is uh, taking the methods that are there whether it is like a authenticated where is the connect is coming from let's just first also see that so in your case your connect method is coming out that we can just quickly check that so it is a by default we are just calling the connect okay so that is coming from your typescript node module typescript react redux so that is coming from react redux and you will be passing one method to converting a state converting state that is the state that redux is managing into properties list of properties so state dot auth dot token not is equal to null that means they're going to be storing in the front end jwt token so if the jwt authentication token is available then it says it's authenticated else it will be false and then uh, you have like a dispatch to different properties so here we have on try auto sign up so whenever the application opens up it's uh, take the user to the auto sign up the sign up page that's where it is using the dispatch to move the user to the particular view of react that being how the application has been set up now let's look into few things uh custom layout routers and what are the different action and what is the store or state we are saving and what is the custom react component we can create so before we look into the store uh let us look into the different routes that are there okay so in react case you have you're getting the route obviously and within this route uh what are the you know default path right there are like several components what are the components are there out here uh we're going to see so underneath that there is like different component like assignment list assignment list within the component there are like different containers are there okay so one is going to be for assignment creation one view one is to display the assignment detail one is to list for assignments one is for logging one is for user profile one is for questions so all the different assignments are out here right and they are defined under different containers okay which are under component okay so if there are been no path mentioned right okay hoc is nothing but uh, prop children's so basically nothing but it's just a root and then underneath different routes are defined so first of all you have like a login right so let's go inside the component called login okay okay so here we have our login form that you have named as a normal login form whatever name you are giving it is extending from the react component right now within this component right there are different methods are there so one of the key methods of react is basically how you're going to render that particular component that is out here so how the rendition going to happen okay apart from that there is another method that is there that when the particular rendered form has been submitted then how you're going to handle that so that is given here in the submit method okay. okay no problem apart from that so let's see the render method how we're going to be rendering that okay so first is checking uh is define if any error message happened it just have a define a variable then it's checking whether it's uh, component properties have anything called an error so then it's going to populate the error message like this p tag this and this is the templating that we are seeing this dot props error dot messages okay then the error message is going to just simply 
print it out now uh, then they have a get fill decorator so they are using a fill decorator where basically their form is fill decorator is being their form the custom form that going to be seen on that particular page now here the form item or the how the form that has been not defined okay we are coming step by step okay now this re method return will return the how the estimate structure going to be okay so here we are having first a div if there is like an error message the error message will come out here and if this application, uh, this component has been a loading, right? So then they have like a spin component. Now the spin component is coming from ANTD, the template library they have to use it. So from there, they're going to get the from, icon, input, button, and spin, etc. They are getting that from ANTD. So they're going to be showing their custom web component. They're going to show a spinning icon okay now here uh, they have like a form so on this form submit this handle submit method get called this one okay and then the class name is like a login form now form item underneath that you have the username that has been there and the rules that is there this this particular thing to be required and the message is please input your username then when that is done when your first component is done next the next field that is coming is the input user and then icon there is like an icon there is a placeholder it is a username that is there that is your first form item that has been displayed so one is the level and this is the input field where the user is going to fill in their username next form item is coming which is obviously as we can guess it is like a password and then the corresponding input field that is there and then next one is the button another form item that is button and then within the button they have a, like a login okay and apart from that if they don't want her to log in here they wanted to go to the sign up page if they have already signed up so there is a navigation link that is provided and that is going to dispatch to this uh, content route that is the sign up okay then it is taking the user to that particular sign up page so that normally there and now here again the state from the state they're basically changing to a form they're going to be reading two properties out of the their redux state one is loading and whether there is an error is there okay and then let's look into this this handle method right okay okay now next what is getting uh okay next they're getting that error value or the values they are getting right so in the values, they're going to get the username and password, other and then move the user to the home page. If they have successfully completed without any error, and if there is error, then the error comes in. Otherwise, they will be moved to that. Now, they they're going to set on property on auth, and then basically they store the username and password value that is there and here we can see the on or username and password that is there then they are sending this to an action auth login
So from the action auth logging, they're passing the username and password. Now the where the actions are defined? Actions are defined out here. Okay, let's go inside the okay. So this is our auth login. So here where from the action actually they're going to make a call to the backend port. Now, in the backend code, as we have taken the library called Axios, so Axios being where actually the Java, this is just a library, we can use other libraries too. So this library help us to call the backend API. So restart the login that we know the default port number where it is running 800. And here we are posting using the username and password. Now comes the then, what is then? Based if the username and password is successfully completed, then we can get either this success handler or else it's going to happen into the catch error. Okay, so then when it's successfully completed, we're going to get the token that we're going to be exchanged against our different DPs, uh, different other API call. So from the response, you data you get the key. Then the username you have put, whatever is the name you have, user ID you are extracted from the response, is student you are also doing that, is teacher you are also doing that, and expiration date you are just putting some expiration date on your side. And on the local storage, you are saving the user detail. So in the local storage of the browser, you are basically storing the user detail. We could have alternatively also use the uh, Redux store to store this detail. Okay. Next, it's going to dispatch to a auth success. Okay. And also it's going to check whether that the expiration date has been expired or not. Otherwise, it will expire the user to the auth success. If the user has some failure, it goes to an auth failure page. Now, what is happening when they're going into the auth success? When they are going to the auth success, basically what happening, the putting the type, action type, they have given the all the action type. What are the different kind of action types are supported within the system? Either the auth can be successful, auth can be failed, user can be log out, auth can start it. They can have like a start, then fail, then success. For each operation, they have a start, they have failed, they have success. Because any kind of uh, API call, either that will result in either success or failure. Similarly, you have the assignment details, uh, assignment detail, and then they have create assignment start and graded assignment listing that you can see up here. Okay. Now comes your reducer. So reducer is okay. So from whatever seeing that, um, so first of all, you're going to have like a component. So, uh, so you have like a bootstrap using app indexes and app you mentioned, okay. And here you have the different route. So when you put the by default login, it goes into the login page. And then when you inside the login, then this total thing, the container, uh, total HTML get rendered. And on the submission, what you are doing is you are calling the on these properties, the component properties are calling on auth. On auth, user wanted to do this operation. Okay. And in the history on the React side, you are pushing that. Okay, this is the first is um this is the place where I'm coming into. I'm coming into this. So user can go back to that or you can dispatch back to his previous state if you want to. Okay. So now from here, when you say on auth, right, then you are dispatch it to the actions. And action is the auth login. These are the input fields. Then it comes to the under react action type and the, sorry, action faces. When the action is basically where you're going to make the API call, either you get a success, either you get a failure. When you get a failure or success, then you put a dispatch method 
when you have the dispatch method, then it goes into the reducer. That means this is the outcome of my method. So if it has been successful, and when, what are you passing that into a dispatch, right? So let's look into that first. So, so when you're passing that into a dispatch, you are passing the whole object with the detailed data that you get from a response. You can formalize that and you can pass this detailed data there, right? So then, okay, my auth is successful. So what the next I'm going to do, I'm going to save the state. I'm going to save the state out here, right? So we're going to go state to state. There are a few additional details I'm going to set. Google uh, in my state is that the error is false. The loading is false. Error is null. Loading is false. User ID is this. You're getting the user ID. So any next operation, I'm going to use the user ID. If the user wanted to create a new assignment or submit an assignment, and I also check whether the student is, is teacher or is student, what is the username, those kind of details I extracted. Along with that, I extracted the token that I'm going to use for the next future calls. That is saved. And that value has been saved out here. So that's how it is so far working. So today we're going to end that. And tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to look into the other code. And also we're going to be executed and then see the demo of the application. Any questions so far? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So, Brunendo, Amrita, you guys are good? Yeah, sir. Okay, fine. So uh, sir, I have a question, uh, not from this project, uh, from uh, learning queue. Currently, I, I, have, I am currently learning the uh, class uh, API. Mm -hmm. And I, I have tell you that I am I, I have worked on Django, but I have never worked on Django REST API. So uh, can I drop the uh, class API and start learning the uh, Django API first? Yeah, you can you can start the Django REST API as well. Okay. 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 Any other question you have? No. Okay. Amrita, any question from your end? uh not not yet okay fine so i think these are all been covered into our uh... okay.